Welcome to Lessons in Leadership, Steve Adubato with my colleague, Mary Gambit. Mary, have you noticed that we've taped so many shows today and because you and my lovely wife, Jennifer, criticized my attire, I've gone with a totally new look. I, I, I have to say, I give you an A plus, a 10 out of 10. Did you shop on your own or did you bring a friend? You know what? Because life begins at the end of your comfort zone. And I was very comfortable with my blue pinstripe suit, white shirt, even though every pinstripe suit looks exactly the same. Solid ties. That's it. I'm going all out with new clothes, Mary, because I wanted, I shopped for myself and wanted to be different. I love it. And I'm not even joking. And I know I texted you before, but I really like the changes. It's really great. Keeps it interesting. Yeah. Keep evolving. That's what happens when you're young. So uh, we speaking of young. We have a young man with us today who's he's a lot more serious than his dad. He's also a lot more intellectual. He's a great writer. He is a tremendous educator and teacher. Stephen Gregory Adubato. I know that because his mom and I named him. That's my son, our son. Um, and Stephen is not on because he's my son. He's on because he's an editorial fellow at Compact Magazine, host of the uh, Stephen. It's post, excuse me, cracks in postmodernity. Yeah, that's right. He's also been published in Newsweek, the Daily News. By the way, Stephen, did you know I had this framed in my office? Yep, I saw it. Thanks oh, from the Daily News. that's yep. so yep. sweet. Yep, this kid's a real writer. I'm like, trust me, I'm a fake writer. He's a real writer. <laughs> um, and Stephen, we have you on largely to talk about the leadership connection to writing, meaning you express yourself largely, not exclusively, as a writer. Where is the place for leadership or being a leader in the universe that you communicate in and those who you communicate to? Is that about leadership or is that just the way I view it? Please. No, I think for a writer, uh, our, our role as leaders is to really put questions out there into the public sphere because, you know, we have so many conflicting narratives out there. We hear all kinds of different news stories one after another. And a true journalist should make us really look more closely and ask, so what does all this mean? What does it have to do with us on a personal or a human level, we can say? So ultimately, it's about forging these questions for the public. Mm. You know, Stephen spent, how many years were you at St. Benedict's Prep teaching religion and Religion and theology? Religion is Religion theology. philosophy. It was uh, a little over eight years altogether. I had zero to do with that, Stephen. Maybe just a little. On, what's that? Maybe just a little bit. Not the religious part. You know, Stephen is a very spiritual young man, and um, that part I claim no credit for. He's also a, a great teacher and educator because he's developed his own approach. That being said... I remember when you started teaching, how uncomfortable you were, how nervous you were, how everything you're writing out, lesson plan. Over time, other than experience, what made you more confident in front of the classroom, which is also part of communication and leadership, please, and then Mary will jump in. I would say the first thing is really taking my content seriously and understanding why it's worth my while to teach this kind of information to young people. But then after that, I would say really getting to know the students, trying to understand their lives, their own questions, their experiences. I think those two aspects really make someone, prepares them to be a, a good educator, to really have a, a serious connection with students. And Stephen's also taught at St. John's University and Seton Hall University in those same arenas. Mary, go ahead. Yeah, I would love to talk a little bit about that writing piece. And you're talking about young people. So many of our young people today are influenced by what they read, what they see on social media. How do you define or what does that look like to you to be a responsible journalist, to write without a slant while also getting people to think and pose questions to get people thinking, but not get them to think in the way that you want them to think? And I know that sounds very convoluted, but I would love to get your perspective on just really reporting the truth uh, without slanting too much or at all. Yeah. No, I, I think ultimately, like, you have to make an effort to try to understand all the different perspectives, all the different points of view out there. And I think especially when you're working with young people, that's why you have to be in dialogue with them and hear their point of view, hear what they think about what's going on. But in the midst of hearing all these different opinions, all these different points of view, you have to get to something objective. You have to ask, okay, so what's really happening here? 
what really matters. We have to find some common ground because without that, then we're just going to keep clashing with each other. We're going to get nowhere. So I think it's this combination of trying to understand all the perspectives, but cut through it and find something that we can all understand or all relate to. But Stephen, it's interesting. Mary asked you about slant. You do have a slant. You have a point of view. You're an editorial, uh, you're a commentator on social cultural issues. But I think what Mary's getting to is, is this, at least as I interpret it. Mm -hmm. I've never thought that you were trying to convince people of your rightness, that you're right about something, but rather to encourage a dialogue. How the heck do you do that in an environment where an awful lot of folks, be it about politics, cultural, social issues, they're convinced of their rightness, son, please. I think it goes back to what I was saying earlier on, that there are certain questions that I think are universal to all human beings. Such as, play them out, let's be more specific, go ahead. No, I think we all want to know, like, what is true? What is true from what is false? We want to pursue what's just. We want things to be fair and equal for all people. We want to find things that are meaningful for us. And we may come to different conclusions or different answers. And, you know, again, when I'm writing an opinion piece, I have to be very clear that, yes, I have... I have an answer to these questions. I have an opinion about it. But what I want to push forward is not necessarily my answer, but the question itself. I want to encourage people to dig a little deeper and ask, okay, what, what does all this mean? What is true here? Again, what, what, did, what would justice call for in this situation? So pushing those questions really is, I think, a unifying force for everybody. Mary, I want to try this. You and I talk about this all the time on Lessons in Leadership. Um, the responsibility we feel as parents to be leaders, meaning I don't, I'm not saying you're the leader of your family, I'm the leader of my family because Bill obviously plays an important role in your family. My wife, Jennifer, obviously a strong leader. Stephen's mom, uh, Marianne, a very strong leader, a terrific mom. But here's what I'm curious about. Do we, as parents, teach our kids to be leaders? First you marry, and then I'm gonna ask you, Stephen, I was going to call him son. I can't keep calling him that on the show. Um, <laughs> no. Because I'm trying to figure out like where we our job stops. Pick it up, Mary. Yeah, I don't think it ever stops. I think that literally from birth, we teach our kids to be leaders and we encourage them to understand what that means. And that being a leader when they're young is doesn't mean being bossy, doesn't mean bullying, but it means being independent, being truthful, uh, being all those traits that really encompass what we want leaders to be either in ourselves or of people around us. But Stephen, is it that as parents, to, to try to be a good parent, is your job just to teach your kid, your, your son, your daughter, to be a good person who's responsible and accountable and cares about other people, but leadership is something separate? Or is that a huge part of leadership, Stephen? No, it's all interconnected. I think especially teaching your kids certain moral values, how to stand up for what is right, stand up for other people who are more vulnerable than yourself. But also, I think it, the emphasis should be on teaching young people how to think and not necessarily what to think. What does because that mean, how? how? How to think in terms of how to, again, how to ask questions, how to think critically for themselves, how to dig deeper beyond, you know, the, the polemics, beyond the, the disagreements in the, you know, in the news that we see and ask, so like, what's really happening? But again, it's it's not necessarily an adult's job, whether a parent or a teacher, to tell them this is what the answer is, this is the correct way to think. Instead, it's it's fostering that critical thought in them. But I think it was such. One more quick follow-up. So I remember trying to give Stephen advice. You don't don't give me that smile, son. I say, I know what you're thinking before <laughs> you even say anything. For years, I would try to give him advice. And I'm sure in part it was the delivery that was problematic. But let's just say that I wasn't particularly successful, at least in my mind at the time. Is it wishful thinking, Stephen, for those of us who are parents who say, because now you'll often come back and say, well, what you said I thought was ridiculous. And now I realize some of it, tiny bit, made some sense. Is it wishful thinking for us to believe as parents, and this is a leadership and communication thing as well, that it's not our job to get our kids to, our children to say, yeah, you're right, I'll do that in real time, or that at some point later, they'll see some value. And I know that's a convoluted question. No, I mean, it's rare that a young person's going to acknowledge that an adult is right in the moment that they're telling them something. But 
speaking from my own experience, I've come to see over time, yeah, what you said to me 10 years ago, that makes a lot of sense. And now I want to follow that. But beyond the, the advice that you gave, I think it's, it's the example that you said, because that's really, that's really how one leads through their example, through the way that they live. That's how a young person learns. So I think it's, it's being patient and letting the kid take their time to understand, but also just setting the example. Son, son, Mary, you know, how... so here's the, here's the problem with what I have, what Stephen said. So in many ways, and I and he, we've done so many things about my father, Stephen's grandfather, who he was very close to, my father, Steve Adubato Sr. I learned very often, I, I learned an awful lot about how to lead by watching my dad, but I also learned how not to lead by watching my dad. I also tried to learn how not to act. That doesn't mean I didn't act like my father was very rough and aggressive and loud and confrontational, less than artful or helpful way, Mary. He liked to argue and fight and he take control. Point being, a lot of who you are, son, as a person, as a leader, is someone who says, I see how my dad acted in some ways and overreacted and had a bad temper. I don't want to be like that. Isn't that part of learning too? That, that's definitely a part of it, but it's also when your parent or when a teacher owns up to their mistakes and says, you know, I've done this a lot. I, I just did this. And that's a mistake. And I'm sorry. I mean, that's another huge way for a leader to educate, owning up to their mistakes. Mary, final word. Uh, by the yeah, way, I want to thank everyone for watching this therapy session. Between oh, I know, I know. I, I don't know if we can get in and out of this quickly, but I would love just a 30 seconds or less, the cracks in post-modernity. What is it? It's, again, it's this whole uh, project to get people to ask deeper questions about what's going on in the world around them, going on in their own lives, and to forge some common ground. Is it a podcast? It's a podcast and it's a, a blog page. And where can people, we'll put that up on screen. I know you shared that information with me. We'll put it up on screen right now. Yeah, the blog is on Substack and the podcast is available on Spotify, YouTube, Apple, all the major channels. Outstanding. And I do, Steve, you gave me the final half final word. I do want to say, Stephen, it has been my pleasure. Um, your dad and I have worked together for 23 years, so it can put in perspective how many years I've been able to watch you grow and evolve as, you know, going through the young man stage and now a man and just seeing you grow as a leader. And I just couldn't be more proud. So I just wanted to say congratulations for all you've accomplished, including the podcast and all uh, the great writing. You're an exceptional writer. So it's just been really my joy to watch you grow and evolve. Thank you, Mary. That's what I was going to say. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, son. We'll be back after this. This edition of Lessons in Leadership is made possible by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the North Ward Center, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, the Helix, Fedway Associates, Inc., the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, Veolia, resourcing the world, Choose New Jersey, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIANJ and Commerce Magazine, and the Meadowlands Chamber and Meadowlands Media. At Delta Dental, we do more to make benefits easy to implement, use, and understand. It's why businesses large and small trust us to keep their employees smiling. Year after year, we make our clients and members happy with unmatched expertise and great dental benefits. We apply our decades of experience to give you more guidance, providing plan design options and cost-saving measures. With reliable support for you and your employees, we make administration effortless and free up your time so you can focus on other business needs. We even do more for vision care with Delta Vision. Choose Delta Dental and discover what the power of more can do for your business and your employees. Welcome back to Lessons in Leadership. Steve Adubato, Mary Gamba. Mary, you were saying something uh, we got off camera. And again, Mary's son, uh, Joey's been with us, who's a really talented young artist. 
performer, actor. He's, he's talk about a five tool athlete. He's a, he does all kinds of stuff. So we're not, not everyone's going to have their kid on, but when yeah. their kid's really special. Although it is fun. <laughs> it is. But again, you said something funny about my son, Stephen, uh, who's 30 now. Um, you actually picked him up from school when he was a little kid. I did. Yeah, there were there were only a few times, a handful, literally a handful, like maybe three times where you were in a pinch. Our offices were right around the corner from his elementary school. That's and right. I remember pulling up. It was that big, big hill. And, you know, it would be snowy or icy. And I'd like, be careful. And, you know, seeing his little cheeks, he'd get into the back seat. I mean, he had to have been eight years six, old at the time. Six, six, seven, even or younger, eight. Seven, yeah. seven or eight. I don't know. I, I, yeah. age, age is nothing to me anymore. And he was just so sweet back then. And I said, if you look goodness up in the dictionary, there's a picture of Stephen. He is just such a caring, intellectual. I know we talk a lot about intentional. Everything he does is intentional and just good. It is. He's, he's yeah, I don't know where he came from. It comes from his mom. Oh. <laughs> so um, let, let me do this. I'm going to transition here. People say, what's the segue here? So uh, can Frank and Elvin, I know it's the end of a long taping day. We taped Governor Murphy today and... 15 other interviews. It's a long day. We're at the end of the day. So I'm going to have some fun with our team. So they have no idea what I'm doing. They don't know why I'm doing it, but I want them to come on. Frank and Elvin, could you come on? So should I throw my script away? There it goes. You don't need a script. Trust me. There's a point to this. And here it is. I've be I was obsessed with our son for years by being overly complimentary, meaning everything he did, even if it was some <clears throat> some artwork that wasn't that great. And trust me, he's a great kid. His artwork wasn't great. I would tell him how great it was. I would often over uh, compensate by complimenting, which has its own pros and cons. That being said, is it fair to say that Elvin and Mary over compliment each other and are constantly telling each other how great they are and that you, Frank Brown, after th three decades in the business, it's You've seen enough. You've had enough. And they don't, it's over the top, is it not? Because I personally and professionally don't love seeing it because they never include me and they just compliment each other. Well, it, <clears throat> it's not that I think they, I don't know why they do it, honestly. You, you know, think it's just, real? Do you think it's I, real, I, Frank? It, 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 it's, it, it's, it's, it is genuine. Yes, it's, it is. No, no, I didn't ask it's, you. I'll come back. To you in a and I know I don't even get a say, so I'll no, just sit here and listen. But I do want I'm, a word. I'm trying to find the right word without getting us taken off the air. Um, but it's rather synthetic. <clears throat> synthetic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 not real. Oh, uh, yes, it is. Not all yes, day long. Yes, it is. I can and, count and it, on. And it's, and it's not because they don't include me either, Steve. So you and I both are, you know. And they don't compliment Scarlin or or the makeup artist the same way. April, April's Everybody, list, they're all great, but nobody does it the way. Everybody's they do. great. But I cannot believe that we are even having day. this conversation. Mary, feedback is a funny thing. Listen to Frank. Wow, it's, it's Frank. I, I don't compliment you all. I, I compliment you all the time, Frank. Not not all day long. Yeah. Not on a tape. Day. I got, I'm okay I, with that. But Elvin, it's what's just it about? Amazing. What do you mean? Elvin, what's it about? about? Why is it that you feel the need? To constantly tell Mary how terrific she, Mary, I love your hair like that. Oh, Mary, Mary you look terrific. Hair, oh, Mary, that was great. Nice. I, 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 I do like the length. I do. Yes. No, I'm not talking about the particulars. <laughs> I told Mary her hair was nice a couple weeks ago when it, I noticed it growing. <laughs> and that once. was it. Like, it's still it growing. Once. Okay, it's this it. This is hysterical. Every week? Every, By the way, all day long? This is where you know lessons in leadership has absolutely no script. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, because Mary threw her script out because Steve I did. I put it over there. there. We were going to do a mini seminar today, Steve. We yes. still can. We'll we'll it's still about, reserve the right to do that. It's about complimenting and potentially over complimenting. That's the See, point of this conversation. All right. Well, let me just say why. What what no one seems to realize is somehow Elvin is over there. And the reason why that initial compliment came is we were actively in a segment with a guest. He was in two Zoom links checking. We had the, the governor of New Jersey. Hey, he was this checking. Take a while. Ooh, he's sorry. like NASA. He he's is he's a little like, salty. It is. And I even complimented Steve today. And I always tell him that. He always hears the negative or me complimenting now, other now people. Now, I will say, we've all, we've I, all Steve, 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 Steve
to Mary's well, defense, Mary did compliment you a lot today on your switching of. Hold on, hold on, yes. Steve. I'm going to in did. writing. What did I say to you? By the way, with however many viewers we have, are turning the they channel. They are turning right it now. off. Yeah. Go ahead. I but said. Mary text, go ahead. I said we are doing great. Let's keep it up. In all seriousness, I love your new ties and jackets. I, uh, I said that at at a couple of times. 19. A couple of times. Thank and you. I said it on the air. Verbally. And, also said, and I also right. said that your your demeanor has changed, that you've been working on it, that that you've done great at focusing it and acknowledging and moving on. I said all those things, but you don't remember them. Just not so. over and over and over. You know yes. why, Mary? Go ahead, Dalvin. He doesn't want me to compliment you. He only wants me to compliment him. But you were already complimenting his jacket and his ties okay, all day long. No, listen. There's a, actually a serious side to this. If you look, Mary, you've heard me say this in seminars. I'm a big fan of trying to understand what motivates people, mm -hmm. what makes people want to go to the next level, work really hard when they're exhausted. We, listen, we have a great, in all seriousness, we have a terrific team behind the scenes. They work ridiculously long hours. And they're great. They don't take it. I'm not motivating them. Their standard of excellence motivates them. However, back, back, back in the day, there was a brilliant scholar by the name of Abraham Maslow. Look him up. M-A-S-L-O-W, the hierarchy of needs. What you forget is that I have a degree in psychology, Steve. Wow, That's what okay. my degree is in. Yes, and let me compliment you on your degree in psychology. So that being said, <laughs> Abraham Maslow came up with what he called the hierarchy of human needs. Oh, it sounded and better when you said it. No, and hierarchy of human needs. It's a triangle. And at the bottom, Frank and Elvin, the bottom is food and shelter. It's the first need we have. You have to have food and shelter. And, and luckily, thank God, we do. Millions of people don't. So we don't take that for granted. That being said, as you move up Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, recognition is very close to the apex of the triangle. Recognition and, frankly, being complimented. And I'm saying it's a human need. I'm not going to debate Mary anymore, Elvin, on this, because she keeps saying she doesn't need it. She somehow Ma Maslow missed her. She's not <laughs> in the hierarchy of needs. So here's my point. Elvin, you are wasting your compliments because she doesn't need them or want them. Go ahead, Elvin. That I agree with. Well, not that he's wasting them. I do like to hear it. But he should definitely, obviously now, because it's all out there, he should definitely just throw them your way. <laughs> no, no, it's not. About, no, no, no. No. You all come your way. Steve, I love that great time. And the way those black dots are placed so evenly. Oh, they're, they're totally missing the point, Steve. <laughs> Frank, Frank, it's our maturity, our, our, our experience, our being sage, wise professionals in the field that we understand, Frank Brown. Frank Brown and I understand exactly what Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of Frank, I get it. That's it. Mary, I, I No, no, I that's not it. That's not it. We have more of a show today. I don't even know where we go from here, but all I do want to say. You have five minutes. We, we just did something. All right, you ready? <laughs> stay, stay on because we have two great. Listen, th here's the beauty of it. You got Frank Brown, who's one of the best audio engineers anywhere ever, who's also great on camera and great talker, great communicator. Elvin, thank you, Steve. <laughs> you're you're a wonderful host. You're a wonderful you, host Steve. for many, <laughs> many, for over three decades who has brought so much to the community around you and outside of the community that you grew up in. And it, I, I just want to make sure that you're recognized appropriately. And I would like to also say that if it were not for you, Mary. Steve. Hold on, he wasn't finished. I wasn't done. I had more to go. I mean, but <laughs> go ahead, the Mary. five minutes is not not enough to to actually give you all the accolades that you are due. And I, from from my heart, I just want to say thank you for everything you've <laughs> Oh my God. You're wonderful. We, we sound like Elvin and Mary right now. That's what I'm trying wow. to do. That's, really? that's I, my goal. I'm just going to sit back and not say a Go thing. Ahead, Mary, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, Steve, if it were not for you and the leadership that wow. you just bring to. See, now you don't even believe it when I say it. It goes back to that whole thing. I believe Frank. I don't believe you. There's a reason Four why minutes, it's guys. Steve Automato's lessons. It's not Mary Gamba's lessons in leadership. It's not Elvin Badger's lessons. It's, it's not. You know why, Mary? Because your face is not even on the book. I was going to I was gonna mention that, but we're not going to. Yeah. Oh, no. We'll second. save that for <laughs> Okay. No, no. I'm, listen, nothing's off limits here. Yeah. I asked Mary, just so everybody understands. It made no sense. I asked Mary. 
Alvin, you got me wrong, my friend. Yeah, no, he said, and I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. I I wasn't a co-writer. Now, the reality is there's my picture. I told Mary she could have a picture that was like an inch by an inch, and it could be on the back over here. Now, you you said it was going to be on the inside back flap, and I'm like, I'm not an inside back flap kind of girl, so I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) She said, I want half that cover, or I I don't need anything from you. Oh, my gosh. That's it. So here's what I was going to say in all seriousness. We got Frank and Elvin behind the scenes who are also, I don't think they ever signed. If either one of you have been pulled into a production, you've been involved in thousands of productions. And here's why I'm saying this. Have you ever been pulled into a production to be on camera like this on a regular basis? Not at all. Not, not, not a regular basis, but once by mistake, because I used to work for a, uh, a show that his name was John Edwards. He was a, a psychic medium. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, I got read once while I was mixing the show. So I had to actually hold the microphone, mix the show. And yeah, it, that was the only. Oh, one how time. cool is that? Frank, I got to tell you something. Quite interesting. One of my, gotta, one of my relatives came through. Yeah. Frank, I got to say this to you, your ability to be read, have the microphone and multitask under pressure like that just demonstrates how incredibly talented you really are. And I just want to share that with you at this moment while we're complimenting each other. And I, I, I just want to say that to you. Yes. And I would like to piggyback on that, Frank. I could not imagine how you handled all of that at the same time. Well, I, I thank you very much. Yes, it could have gotten a little emotional, but Steve, it doesn't compare to all no, the no, things no. that you, no? And, and, no, I can't take any more, but, but here's what, what I was Mary, I mean, you know, what Mary does week by week and even working with you and the staff and i mean it takes a lot and i understand what goes on it it means a lot to us as well mary i I want you to understand it's not it's not going unseen and elvin i don't even have words look at that no no, he's your mentee hold on he's called you his mentor he's complimented you many times and by the way he always does and i i honestly i don't take that lightly and i i honestly do appreciate that all sarcasm aside i really appreciate that because that means a lot that means a lot. And I'm going to say this. This is on Lessons in Leadership when you know we had absolutely no material. We had no content that we were going to cover. We just were killing about 10 or 11 minutes of time. And Alvin just said we have a minute left. And, I and hope you want to no know one... what's so funny? All the viewers are going, no kidding, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so, Elvin, you mean did... you really didn't have a script for that? <laughs> Elvin, you've worked what? on top level productions, right? Do you think most people watching know Adubato's got absolutely nothing right now? He's just vamping and killing time with his friends on, on behind camera and, and Mary. It's just, do you think they know? I think they know, yes. At least by now, they definitely know. And I want we'll to have to ask your mom and my dad. No, well, I'm going to do this as we end the show. I want to compliment our audience for being so extraordinarily insightful and understanding the essence of this show, the culture of this show, the, 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 the way this show works. And you know that we had absolutely nothing. So I want to thank our audience. I want to thank everyone for watching. Elvin, I want to thank you for telling me to say goodbye to Scarlett, to, to April, uh, to Amy behind the scenes, right? Um, Sylvester. Sylvester, post-production. Who has to sit through this and, and lower third this. <laughs> All right. Is that it? Can I get out now? Yeah. Good. We're done. I want to thank Everyone, see you next time (laughs) on Vamping When You Have No Material. (laughs) This edition of Lessons in Leadership is made possible by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the North Ward Center, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, the Helix, Fedway Associates, Inc., the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, Veolia, resourcing the world, Choose New Jersey, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIANJ and Commerce Magazine, and the Meadowlands Chamber and Meadowlands Media.